On reaching the south bank of Kala Dam, all were Kadi and went towards Utrase. He saw that there was a flooded forest everywhere due to the breach of the gate. However, as the water level in Kalad was decreasing, the water was draining rapidly in places where the water had spread due to the breach. At last he reached Tirapuram Bayam. He was surprised to see that the town alone was not affected by such a flood. Thinking that this is the reason why the history of Tirapuram Bayam alone was submerged in water when the world was submerged in flood, he approached the forest. Although many trees had fallen there due to the storm, he did not go without a thicket to hide in. When I looked like that, I saw three men and one woman standing at the gate of the school temple and talking. When he looked closely, he realized that they were all familiar to him. These three boys were among the first to meet for conspiracies in the same schoolyard forest. One was Saman Sambavan, another was Gramavathan, the third was Itumpankari, the boat woman was the wife of Muragayan. Among them Itumpankari was saying something to the others. The news seemed to cheer them up. Okay. In that case, we can leave for the foothills of Pashamalai right away. It will take two days to reach, said Saman Samhavan, all were Kadian heard. The third person is Itumpankari, wife of the boatwoman Muragayan. Among them Itumpankari was saying something to the others. The news seemed to cheer them up. Okay. In that case, we can leave for the foothills of Pashamalai right away. It will take two days to reach, said Saman Samhavan, all were Kadian heard. The third person is Itumpankari, wife of the boatwoman Muragayan. Among them Itumpankari was saying something to the others. The news seemed to cheer them up. Okay. In that case, we can leave for the foothills of Pashamalai right away. It will take two days to reach, said Saman Samhavan, all were Kadian heard. Thinking that he could leave there before them, all were Kadian turned back. He was startled to see a small knife at his chest. It turned out that the hand holding it was the hand of Pungazali. The confusion is gone. Both of them recognized each other and expressed their surprise by smiling. After knowing that the conspirators have gone from there, all were Kadian, Pungazali. How did you get here from Tanjavur? Why did you come? He asked. I came to take revenge, said Punguzali. What's wrong? Why? One of them was Badagan who had run away after killing my aunt. I followed my father and caught him at this place. Three more people had come before him. I was even more shocked to see my brother's wife with them. Just then you came and interrupted me. What can I do now? If you want to help me, don't let them go. I will go ahead and kill the person who killed my aunt. She said. Alas! Pity! Your aunt, is that dumb Queen Mandakini? Why did one of these kill her? All were Kadian asked. I didn't kill my aunt for the sake of killing her. My aunt took the job of killing the emperor. She said. Oko! Really? Did the dumb queen save the emperor by giving her life? How did all this happen? Tell me in detail, let's hear it. Is this the time to tell the details? Will they escape? Punguzali. I know where they are going. I have guessed why and whom they are going to meet. It is better not to obstruct them on the way. Let us also go where they are going. After knowing what I want to know there, you can finish your blame, said Alwarkadian. Then depart. As you go I will tell you in detail all that happened in Tanjavur," said Punghuali. Both of them crossed the territory by boat and reached Acre. They travelled towards the northwest direction. After travelling day and night for three days, they reached the foot of the Green Mountain. As the foothills were covered with thick forest, Ilesil could not find out where the people they were looking for might be. They felt exhausted thinking that their journey with so much effort would be in vain. Suddenly an owl's voice was heard. In response another voice heard the same. All Workadian's face lit up. He signalled to Punghuli to come with him without speaking. A gap appeared where the owls had been heard. There were seven or eight people there. Some people were cooking on fire. Others were talking. 
It turned out that the people who had been there before and the new arrivals were telling each other some surprising news. Rabbi Dasan was one of those who were there earlier. He was pointing to a hillock that was a little far away and telling the newly arrived people. All Workadian took care of this. In a soft voice, Punguzali. The people I came to look for must be inside that cave. I will enter Melek's cave and see. If any of these people come near the cave, give a voice. He said. I can't scream like an owl screams. I scream like a quill, said Pungazali. A few large holes were made inside the mountain cave to allow air and light to enter. So the light was coming inside. In that light all Workadian saw a rare sight. Like the bull-faced preachers, Periya Palyavatare was dressed in tiger skin. Beside him lay a garland of skulls. From his pale face it was assumed that the blood must have been drained from his body. The person who was lying on the floor seemed to have regained consciousness and tried to sit up. He looked as if he had just woken up from some terrible dream world. His eyes widened. Nandini was by his side. She was bejeweled and dizzy. Yet her charming beauty shined many times more than before. Love and support, pity and sympathy, in a hoarse voice, sir. Drink this porridge. She was handing him an earthen pot while saying that. The reaper looked back at her. For a moment his face flashed a smile indicative of infinite pleasure. Nandini. My Empress. Is it you who have spoken? Is it your voice? Where are we now? Did you bring me back from death's door? Did you do to me today what Savitri did to Sadiavan? When I remembered I seemed to be looking at my breast with your flowery hand. Is it true? Has she, who has refused to touch me for three years, finally relented? Where? Give me. Give me the porridge. If you give me porridge with your hand, it will be my god's milk. Said. Saying this, the man who took the earthenware from Nandini's hand suddenly started staring at her. In a completely changed voice of horror, Adi Badaki. Rakshasi. Is that you? You dare to touch me? Did you stab me in the chest? Did I wake up then? Is this vessel really Kanji? Or is it a ninja to kill me? Even if your hand is divine, is it not poison to me? After saying that, he threw away the idol. It hit the cave wall with a thud and fell into a hundred pieces.